Well, still on women in politics, we will be looking at pushing more female voices forward, like we are doing this evening and involving girls very early. I'm being joined by Isabella Akinshe. She's a media entrepreneur and she's also a broadcast journalist. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. And I have back in the studio Nafisa Abubakar. She's a legal practitioner. Of course, she's a girl's advocate. <laughs> yes. Thank you for joining us again. You're welcome. All right, so I'm going to start with you, uh, Isabella, since you're like fresh fish. <laughs> <laughs> I you like haven't that. been on the panel. <laughs> okay, so um, we know that girls in Nigeria could be considered a dan endangered species, especially girls in the northern parts of the country. First things first, they, they, go, they go to school, especially in the northeast, they cannot go to school safely because of the environment. And for those who are able to even go to school, there are some, you know, uh, traditional or cultural, you know, barricades that does not allow them to think a certain way, except maybe you're like Nefisit who comes from a family where that you're allowed to think outside the box. How do we get those people, mostly the mothers and those girls, to begin to think outside the box, to see the bigger picture that women can actually be whatever they want? So I have been to the Northeast and I've spoken to women from the Northeast and I don't think the women are the problem or the girls. I think it's the men. And I think if we're going to solve this problem, we have to all be united. We have to get the men to also be part of this because while the women can unite, mm -hmm. it's still the men who will say, no, I don't want my daughter going this far. I don't want her tarnishing the family name. I don't want her doing something that will be considered a culture or taboo. So mm -hmm. for, for me, I think, if we get the men involved and we show them the whole picture, and one way we can do that is to identify women who are currently in politics. And if you look across the north, you would see women who have contested. I mean, mm -hmm. easily comes to mind Mama Taraba. Mm. I mean, she had a cult following mm -hmm. and she was very close to becoming the governor. This is someone that's one of theirs. So we're not saying, come and do what they're doing in the southwest or in mm. the south. We're saying, mm. this is what's happening in the north. These are women just like you. This daughter of yours can grow up to be like this woman. Mm. And she is part of that society. So I think if we can identify positive female role models in the local communities who are holding leadership positions, whether it's within the party, whether it's public office, whatever it is, we can begin to change the mindset. And that when people start saying, I'm going to tell your husband, I'm going to tell your father, I'm going to tell your uncle, these men will say, yes, she has my full backing mm -hmm. because the women and the daughters are ready. Mm. So the men are mostly the problem. Because I used to ask, who writes these laws? Who says it's evil? Is it the men who write the laws or is it the women? But there are also women, Afisa, mm -hmm. who uh, vilify or chastise other women mm -hmm. for saying, oh, you went away against the norm. So, yes, I agree with her that men are the problem, but what about those women? Well, for those women, I would say culture is the problem and education is the problem because you know when you want to bring something novel something new your first instinct is to fight against it mm -hmm. so you know it's it's when they say something oh this is dangerous my child shouldn't be part of it my my kids shouldn't be part of it i don't want you to be part of it in their mind or in their own way they're trying to protect which is not a bad thing but like i said culture basically informs the decisions that they make and the restrictions that they put around children and people make up culture so if we change the people then we change the culture but, but I'm, I'm talking about the northern yes. women mm -hmm. because northern nigeria mm -hmm. uh, is legit but you see the thing is we see those women come out to vote but mm -hmm. then they cannot blind behind me, um, women i mean their kind we see uh what's the name of the lady her name uh, no, the lady who tried to run for presidency uh oh, some Sarah years ago Sarah 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 it was a letdown, not uh -huh. just for the men, but it was like the women supported the men to say, but you see, you guys are un unable to support your kind. So let's talk about the average Norton woman, because no matter how you, we talk about it, uh -huh. when you have that conversation with them, there's a striking thing about the fact that no, we don't want problems. How do we break that? Well, how do we break that taboo? To be honest, I think that's, when they say, oh, we don't want problems, as a result of the reality on ground. 
And like you said, it's how do we change that reality? How do we change our reality by getting the men on our side? And how do we do this? Because you see another thing is if you and I and mm -hmm. all of us looking the way we look go there to talk about it. Mm -hmm. They're already condemning us. So how do we appeal to that, their senses to say, look, we're not wayward women. We, we're not, we have something to tell you. How do we do that? Because it's like a, a brick wall that you, uh -huh. it's like you can't break it down. So I, I think um, if you look at the North, what are areas where women are being socialized? What, what are areas where you will see people coming to listen? Easily, I think of religious bodies, and mm -hmm. I also think of schools, and I also think of um, social events. So the people who are there, you're, you're talking about your sultan, you're talking about your local leaders, mm -hmm. your community leaders, your rulers. You're talking about these people. They have influence. They can say do A, and they can begin to cause that generational oh, shift. shift. So it's important that we get these people. Again, these leaders are mostly men. They're mostly men. So if we can get the leaders, then we can also look at religion. Mm -hmm. So in the North, we do have Christian religion as well as Islam. Um, Islam. And if you do interpret both religions properly, you'll see that the woman is given her rightful place. A woman is not substandard, is mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. unequal. And that's why you have families. And I like the example you gave where a woman is allowed to have exactly the same rights as a man. So there are families like that in the North, yes, yeah. all over the North. So Can if, we make the model from of the families? North? <laughs> so, so if we have more families like that, where it's okay for my daughter to be anything, I'm not going to treat my daughter differently from my son. Then we begin. And these families, a lot of them are well-to-do. And they have the money. They have the opportunities to speak with the leaders who can now use their influence to filter it down, to talk to the men and say, look, this is what the Quran says. This is what the Bible says. Yes, these cultures are there, but we are the ones who make culture. We are the ones who can change things. We are the ones who can say, look at the data showing that if you train a woman, you give her education, this is what she can go on to do okay um nafisa uh these traditional leaders or leaders of thought and religious leaders do go abroad mm -hmm. they in fact go for several meetings where women messages are preached let's look at a um, malala yusuf you know that is a girl from a muslim background but she's she could she's anything she wants to be she can go anywhere in the yes, world she can. How is it so convenient that these people go to these places? They applaud. In fact, we have very, the very first countries to append our signatures to whatever UN charters are there. But then we still oppress the women in this country. Is it that they don't know or they just do it because it makes it more convenient for them to perpetrate the acts that are being perpetrated? Well, you can't say they don't know. They don't. It's the same problem with corruption and everything, but they do know that this is how things should be so it's either number one they don't agree with it and they're just paying lip service to it over there there is absolutely no political will polit in mean, the political parties in government and whatnot then it serves their own selfish interests to be honest because let's not lie politics in this country is used as a means of padding your own pockets and making sure that your generations to generations are comfortable I'm going to ask a very uncomfortable question. Mm -hmm. There have been fingers pointed. I mean, I'm an advocate for women leadership. Every time I say something, there are people who are quick to say, oh, but there is a Stella Odua. What did she do? Oh, there is a, um, uh, the former petroleum minister. What did she do? Oh, there's a, a Patricia Ite. What model are you telling us about? So how do we match that? How do we look at, where are the other female models that we can say, Look at this person is doing great. To win the argument, and I know we're not necessarily trying to win an argument, we're trying to change the course of things, but yeah. we also need people that we can model our girl children after. So what do we do? So I feel like when you're having those kind of bays, because I mm -hmm. feel they're very unintelligent conversations, mm -hmm. you of can course. say, for every one female name you're going to throw at me, I can throw 10 right back at you. I can give you a list of men who are corrupt. And they're not being judged by their gender. So why should it be we're any judged. different? Exactly. Of course, we're all human beings. So it means that we're going to have people who have good character and people who have questionable character, whether or not they are men or 
women. So that conversation can end there. But to now go back to how can we begin to point out oh, female yeah. role models, it takes me back to my first point to say there are women who are doing great things. They might be in appointed roles. They might be in elective roles. Mm -hmm. They might be leaders in, in, in very important agent, agencies and um, government parastatals. And we can begin to say, look, you can grow up to be like this woman. You can come out and you can have a chance. And I think we women, we have agency. We have the numbers. Politics is a numbers game. Exactly. If we can just get ourselves together and speak with one voice and say, you know what? We're tying our rapper today. These are 10 things we want. If we're not going to get seven, then forget about our blocks. We will not wake up our But you sons. see, the problem is we cannot come together. Unity. So that is another big problem. It's like the elephant in the room. As much as we preach this message, why can't we get past our differences as women? Because it seems like we are also the major, major, major problem. And I want to ask you a question. What are the differences, the perceived differences? Of? That the women have, why we can't come together. I mean, I'm sure different women have different reasons why they would not support women. Oh, you know, being in politics is a dirty game. The questions that are thrown to women, most women politicians have interviewed is, where are your children? How, where's your husband? Why are you out here at this time of the night? So those are some of the questions that are being asked by women, other women, to these women who are running for office. So again, a woman, a woman makes a mistake and you're quick to, you're the first person mm -hmm. to tell her that, huh. Yeah, yeah, you can't do that job. I wish it was a man that was there. We, I, we hear these kind of things. But then when men make the same mistakes, we don't vilify them, like you said. So Double standards. Ex yeah, but exactly. I, I think women can come together, and they do come together. And if we go back in history, we'll see like the Abba women's riots, yeah. where, I mean, women said, look, we're not, you're not going to give us this tax. This tax. Mm -hmm. We're not going to pay it. We're going to organize ourselves and make sure that we come together. So there are instances of us coming together. But for me, I think women need to count the cost. So I've interviewed women politicians, and sometimes when I listen to them, I'm wondering, like, do you really know what you're getting into? Do you know the sacrifice? Do you know the, the, the cost that you're going to pay emotionally mm -hmm. with your reputation? But mm -hmm. you have to go where the men are going. Mm -hmm. So if we can't do our own, you know, old girls club in the night at the pepper soup joints mm -hmm. and drinking, you know, why can't we, when we come together, maybe in religious bodies, when we come together um, for PTA, mm -hmm. when we're doing school runs, you see women coming together, rallying around themselves for things that are important to mm -hmm. them, their children. So there are points exactly. where we can Rally unite together. and say, you know what? Everybody is going to put that 20,000, that 50,000 mm -hmm. naira that will normally give you for a show. Mm -hmm. We're not exactly. giving you for a show, but we're going to give it to you to run a campaign. And you will match the men naira for naira, cobble for cobble, and you will see that we'll deliver the numbers. But if we don't put our money where our mouth is, then we're going to keep you know, coming last. It's mm. just about that. And the truth is that when women come and they show up in their full might, even the other women will sit up and say, yes, this is somebody I want to be associated with. Because success is such a magnet. It attracts people. people. So at that point, the women are not going to think whether it's a woman, it's a man. I just want to be part of that wagon and I'm going to join it. And if it's my 50 naira, it's my 50,000. But we have to take politics seriously. The way we will take our ashore, the way we take our parties, the way we take our children. So we should take advantage of those meetings and begin to, you know, push, inject some politicking into it? Yeah, definitely. We need to take advantage of those meetings. And to be honest, Our I, August meetings. Yes. Uh, yes. No, I have know. our August meetings. Have just, just, just have any meeting. Gather together. Talk about it. Talk about the issues. Talk about because women are very, very, very... Sorry, women are very, very passionate about PTA meetings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, I said, they want to they, force the school authority exactly. hand. They can turn the hand. Whether it's school fees, it's the policy mm -hmm. with children. Women will go out on a limb. They will. Mm -hmm. So there are opportunities for us to come together. But what are we using them for? How many of us have said, okay, we know a female politician and we're all going to rally around this person? Beyond social media, forget about reposting their images. I have too many questions for money. you, Isabella, but we have to go. <laughs> Nafisa, we have to go. We'll take no another problem. break and when we return, we'll be looking at raising money. And that's the part <laughs> where I'm going to go in hard. Stay with us.